You had six antiderivatives going backwards. It's going to be tricky. You're going to be taking derivatives and taking antiderivatives on this um, midterm, okay? So we got to start getting to our brains like the derivative of 3x to the fourth, I might as well put that down here, is 12x cubed. The antiderivative, add 1, then multiply by the reciprocal, but we don't forget a plus c. Why? Because any constant's derivative is zero. So if I took the derivative of this, no matter what c is, I get this. So we always include a plus c when we're going backwards. No plus c is needed when we're taking the derivative. And uh, if we have some function with an ax plus b, some sort of composition, we can undo the chain rule. We'll say we have an antiderivative of the function. But because of the derivative of this, has an outside and inside, the derivative of the f of would be just regular f, but the derivative of ax plus b would be a. I need a 1 over a, so that when I take the derivative of this, I get 1 over a times the a, it'll cancel, it'll just give me f of ax plus b. <coughs> so some examples of that are like e to a power, the antiderivative would be e to the power, but then don't forget to multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient of x. Here the antiderivative of 1 over 4 minus 3x is going to be, this is like stuff to the negative first power. Remember with a negative first power, we are going to use a log. Remember the antiderivative of 1 over x, you can't use the power rule. For every other power, you would use the power rule. I would rewrite this as x to the negative second. Its antiderivative would be x to the negative first times negative 1 plus c. But this is antiderivative is log absolute x plus c. If I have 1 over 4 minus 3x, its antiderivative would be log absolute 4 minus 3x plus c. But don't forget a negative 1 third. It's the coefficient of x will multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient. Um, remember, to solve differential equations, your goal is to find what f of x is equal to. So if I'm given a second derivative, I need to work all the way back to f. Just make sure you go one step at a time finding each c when you take an antiderivative. So antiderivative of 2, 2x, two f prime of 1 is 3. So when I plug in 1, I better get 3. I get c is 1. So f prime of x is equal to 2x plus 1. I'll then take the antiderivative again to get f. f of x is equal to x squared plus x plus c. I'm told f of 1 is 4. 1 plus 1 plus c equals 4. c is 2. f of x would be x squared plus x plus 2. But then we got into tougher differential equations when we had multiple variables. What we did, how we handled this, is we first separated our variables. Then we took the antiderivative of both sides. We needed only 1 plus c on one side. And then our ultimate goal was to solve for y. Uh, using an initial condition, you could find what c was equal to. I didn't give you an initial condition, so we'll just leave it like this. Now, in this situation, if I have a plus or minus, make sure you're careful. If you're told that, you know, y of 1 is equal to a negative value, make sure your answer has just the negative half of things, not the positive half of things. We're going to want our uh, solutions as functions. That's what you're always going to be asked to provide, a function. So you got to make sure that you're, you're, you don't have the plus or minus. You only have one half of things so that it is a function. Okay? Uh, if you have x times y, all of a sudden I have 1 over y dy equals x dx. And if I take the antiderivative of both sides, I have a log, absolute y, and 1 half x squared plus c. This is when we would need to use e to the power to solve for y. Now watch this, e to this power, make sure this entire thing is in the power of e. Now what you're going to do is you're going to know that using exponent properties, this is e to the c times e to the 1 half x squared, and that turns into c e to the 1 half x squared. Okay? You wouldn't need a plus or minus, but don't worry about the plus or minus. You get rid of the absolute value, it turns into a plus or minus, but then when you find c, uh, you'll get rid of the plus or minus so you don't have a non-function, you have a function. Um, just Two other quick ones to do. Um, the antiderivative of, of y squared, don't say that it's log y squared. Okay, 
recall that this would be written as y to the negative second. The antiderivative would be negative 1 over y, or negative 1 y to the negative first. And if I have this situation and I want to solve for y, I would take the opposite of both sides. I would flip both sides. Now, when you flip both sides, make sure c ends up in the denominator. And then you can find c, whatever it is. If you have an e to the y, let's say 1 over e to the y, x dx. If I took the antiderivative of both sides, the antiderivative of this is not log e to the y. I would rewrite it as e to the negative y. And then similar to uh, the antiderivatives of e to the 2x or e to the 3x, it would just be e to the power times the reciprocal of the coefficient of the power. It ends up being negative e to the negative y is the antiderivative. This is 1 fx squared plus c again. And then I would probably take the opposite of both sides. I would use the natural log to get rid of the e. Now, when I take the log of the right side, make sure c ends up inside that log. I'll get negative y equals log of the entire right side. And then I would finish off by taking the opposite of both sides again and having that. OK, so those are the basics of unit uh, six, antiderivatives and differential equations. We did a lot of practice, and these are just a couple of examples of, of what we did.